Hey guys, what's up? I'm Kelly Lynn D'Angelo, your dungeon master. I would love for you guys to use the hashtag, hashtag GGG broadcast to offer up a name of an NPC. And also maybe in this tweet, uh, give us a line to describe what kind of NPC you want to offer up and you just might see them in this story. Howdy folks, please make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Thanks. Welcome to Girls Guts Glory. The Broadcast. Previously on The Broadcast. One, two, three, Ugh. as you pull Buck out. Drusilda does look at the embalming room. I cast invisibility on you, Book. And guess who you do see walking around there? Professor Edwald. You will. Fire me. will kill you. You guys are looking around this temple to Ogma, and you saw not far away um, a, a face that you guys have been looking for, Professor Adwald, walking alongside somebody, uh, whispering quite intently. You can definitely tell from those very plain and indiscernible robes um, the, uh, the physical silhouette of this man. And you guys quickly pull your heads back in and quietly shut the door. Um, you guys are actually, you have just walked up the embalming chamber that leads down from into the main catacombs and the smell is rather uh, grotesque, better lack of terms, um, as you guys are just trying your best to kind of keep hold your breath but also have a discussion after witnessing that. I thought he wasn't supposed to come till tomorrow. He's not. I don't know what's going on. Maybe he just decided to come in early. He might be here to see someone else. Perhaps we should take this opportunity to go to the school and try and get Farouk while he's not there. Oh, that's very smart. Oh my gosh. I think that's a very good idea. You're very smart and I Second like you. that. How do we get to the school from here? Oh, I can lead the way. Okay, cool. No more poop, I hope. Well. There wasn't any poop to begin with. Technically, no. Starla. It it Although any dust. smell but it this would be yeah, better. Yeah, I would rather, uh, to be honest, and I'm sorry, ladies, if this is gross, but I would rather smell poop than a dead body, so. I'm Do you saying. think we should tell Miriam to stall him? Oh, yeah. Perhaps? That's real smart. I gotta bring her some plants, too. I said I would. Yeah, let's yes. go tell her. Yes. And I start to scuttle back down towards Ooh, Miriam. Follow. <laughs> okay. So all of you guys are gonna make your way back down to try to find Miriam. It takes a little bit of a, of a search, uh, just trying to hear where the clacking of her feet might be in the echoes of these very long winding tunnels, the ones that you guys don't know as well. Um, Starla, you definitely are familiar with the sewers and the inner workings of the <laughs> the tunnels that are not used, but in, in terms of anything above ground or anything like that, you kept yourself scarce. You definitely like to use things that were more covert. So. The catacombs are not something that you have traversed in a great deal, so you're just trying to lead everybody around, but you're not hearing a sound of her until you hear a light, light chuckle in the distance after walking for a solid 10 minutes. Um, you turn a corner and over a table, uh, reading a book is Miram, just kind of laughing to herself, and she looks kind of startled when she sees you guys. She's like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, hi. Hello. Um, hi. <laughs> oh, sorry, we didn't mean to startle you again. It's okay. Uh, it's we, okay. We have a big favor to ask you. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's, what is it? Uh, what do you want to ask? Do you not like your accommodations? Oh, no, they're, they're no, great. They're no, 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 we you. just, we need oh, you to, um, oh, no, no, they're wonderful. It's been so long since wonderful. I've had guests. It's just, no, no, I'm so no. sorry. They're going to be even greater with all the plants I'm going to bring you, but, um. Darling, we need you to me. distract Professor Adderwalt. He's upstairs. Oh, he's upstairs all the time. I mean, he's Good, it's down when he... Good, keep him up there. I can't, entertain. I can't leave. There's no... You, you know that. I, I am I am beholden to be underground. Darkness is my friend. We are also your friends. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's a crazy idea, friend. Well, you got plenty now. Perhaps She's like chemical. slowly stroking the plant you gave her. Oh, like I'm going to bring you a better one. That's not one of our best ones, but it's the one I had in my pocket. I'm going to bring you What's one of our last. You Save carry the way. Huckley, you carry plants in your pocket. Oh, it's a part of home. We, we, we grow a lot of ferns and things in my home. It's like one of the things we're known for. Enough with the ferns to... for a moment. Ferns. Yeah, you're right. No, yes. What's the safest way back out and to the school? Oh, um, 
Is it to the school? I, uh, there's no immediate exit to the school from the catacombs. That would be, um, <laughs> that would be quite dangerous. <laughs> um, but but if you wish to go um, uh, uh, anywhere, it would it would probably be up the main staircase, uh, uh, the abomin uh, kind of area, the main hall, and then you'd have to go into the the temple of uh, you know uh, the house of Binder, and from there you would exit. That's that's probably the best exit unless things have changed. I haven't been above ground for centuries. I don't. Thank know. you, Miriam. Uh, mm-hmm. I think. Um, Mm-hmm. Starla, may well we got here, take us back that way? Oh, yeah. Through the sewer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The way we got in, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah? If we can go in, we but can get out. Everyone, I feel like we're, we're missing. We, we, we have a great opportunity to talk to the professor or, or, or spy on him or find out information from him, and I feel like we but should wanna, be following that lead. You want to talk to him? Wait, you want to you talk to him? I don't know if I want to talk to him because he seems like he's a bad man. But he's I feel like actively after us. Yeah, I'm pretty no, I feel like sure that he's the one that's coming after Perhaps, us. Perhaps, Letty, you said oh. you have a disguise kit. I oh. do have a disguise kit. Perhaps you could speak to him and oh. distract him. It's, it's something well, very we go and find... Hey, listen, all right, this is Izzo, okay? I don't know if she can do this. She's a real little kid, and, you know, I don't, I don't think I don't think this is up her alley. I really don't. I'm not sure. Maybe I should do it. Put on a disguise. Become my, you know, inner and outer Zizzo. And talk to Adderwald. See what's up. Why is his name in this book? What is this Professor Ivani Born? Uh, sorry, Headmaster Ivani Born doing to all these poor people? Do you think we should come at him so strongly, or do you think perhaps we should Perhaps somebody who's not as strong, you're saying, I'm too strong. I know, I I look, I'm very intimidating. Thank you for saying that, honey. Well, if it's any consideration, we are very light-footed. We can stealth real good. But we don't want to stealth, we want to talk to the man. Or we could just follow him. What Um, are we going to find out if we follow him? Are you (laughs) invisible? I have invisibility. Perhaps we will hear something if he does not know I we are there. I feel like we should... Wait, they didn't go to our school, right? I went to the school. I, I didn't kind go of. to your school. Huckle, you didn't go to the school. No, but I think he knows my face. Oh, shoot. Yeah, he was with us when we uh, got chased. But so. the point being, uh, we're both real good at stealthing, and uh, we could follow him and maybe like... Uh, listen in or something. Yes. I have really big ears, so I'm good at listening. All right, I feel saying. like you guys should follow him. Okay. I feel like I should make myself up, maybe call on one of my other selves, you know, if I'm too strong, and uh, make myself up. And then when you guys, if you give me the, you know, the go ahead, as we say, I'll go ahead. And I do have a disguise kit, but it's going to take a little bit of time to make I you look like someone else. I have costumes on my board, honey. I oh, got yeah. all the things. That takes like an hour, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah, it's a lot of time. What I got it's clothes, costumes. You know, I got yeah. all of this because yeah. I'm a bard, so no, I got all the it, things. It takes a long time to put on. Does it? Not yeah. your costumes. Oh, never mind. Not yeah, my not costumes, costumes, honey. No, maybe not. But your disguise kit. I yeah. got wigs. I got glasses. I got. Well, I should take my glasses off because you know, Letty. I got. Can you see without right. your glasses? You know what? I can't. Oh. I was wondering if, like, for each different. I will give you. I will totally give you disadvantage on perception checks. Well, I was wondering <laughs> but that's if, like, awesome. if in each uh. different personality, like suddenly you could see, or suddenly you could speak another language, like s- abyssal, or I don't know. I've heard oh, of I cases can't where speak that happens. Like, all right, I'm gonna call on who, which I th- feel like Mildred. You know what is it, Lady Bridge? I feel like she'd be great on this. Who do you think? If we need her, who's who do you think? You know, we got a lot of a lot of characters in me, so. uh... Well, to speed things up, I'm going to s- just start sneaking out. Yeah, I'm going to start sneaking with you. And then you can decide who you want to talk to him. <laughs> Great, I'll put a costume on. Drusilda, what do you think we should do? Can you give us any bonuses to stuff? Got any abilities like that? Oh, yeah, we could use a little... Uh... A little boost, just in case. Oh, I got... Prof- what, do you, what do you need? You're a bard, right? I am a bard. Can you play us a little, like, a little ditty or a little jig or something and, and get our spirits up? Unfortunately, I didn't bring my, uh, my, uh, good, my loot, but I got a... Yeah, you got any spoons? I got my hands on my knee. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. How does that work? <laughs> you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, you yeah. can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Go talk to that guy. Yeah. Go talk to that guy. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's me. 
gonna talk to him, but you're gonna stick around. It's great. You're gonna stick around. You're gonna stick around. <laughs> gonna make it. Everyone starts date. to do stomp around you. It's a whole. It's a whole <laughs> dance and song number. <laughs> oh, get, I'm so inspired. Yes. Yeah, so what's, what's your normal bardic inspiration? <laughs> Is it a 1d6 at level <laughs> four? I'm oh, losing great. my mind. Uh, it is a 1d6. Okay, I'm going to give, you give that 1d6 to Huck, who you've been singing to. Is that correct? Yeah, but I've been kind of doing a, a, beat, a beat poetry uh, <laughs> feeling like it inspired by uh, some people well, that bang I, trash cans. I also want to say I was definitely inspired. So how about as a DM, I'm going to give you inspiration too. Oh my yes, God. All right. that yeah. was awesome. All right, and that with the really leveling good. up we've done, I have some extra points in my, uh, you know, deception, intimidation, performance, and persuasion. Yeah, so Letty, this is great. You're feeling real good. You're feeling like luck's on your side right now, and that you have it in your back pocket from some deity far beyond. Um, good job. Uh, that's, that's I would also like to give some guidance to Starla. Okay. So you just place your hand on Starla's back. Some warmth kind of uh, hits your hits your spine as it kind of tingles. Oh, that felt nice. Thank you, Celine. You're welcome. I thought it might make you feel a little more confident. I do. Celine, perhaps we should try to shadow them and stay lurking in the dark corners of these tall books that I love. I think that is a good idea. <clears throat> All right, I we'll follow you. I've made myself into Lady Bridge. Um, I convinced yeah. her to come out, and she's here. And you're t- you turn around gloriously, now doused in whatever costume this might be, if you want to describe it. I'm wearing a, a sort of lace ensemble uh, with belled sleeves. Uh, very proper, you know, it has a little bit of a collar, not too high, because that would be just, you know, <laughs> gauche. <laughs> And I, uh, I still have my glasses on, but I've kind of put some makeup on, just pa- you know, just a powder to cover my freckles, and um, a, a wig. So it's it's a it's like an updo, a Victorian sort of gray updo, um, and I have a pearls on, and um, uh, I am now just a very, uh, very classy older dame of the theater, Lady Bridge. Yes, you, you have all of the mannerisms down, a role you played well in one of the school plays. No, I did, darling. It was wonderful. You should have seen me. <laughs> you begin to like glide through everybody like in full character as I, they are walking. Yes, and I will be waiting forward. in the wings. If you feel like you need me to speak to him, I will come. All right, so you guys all uh, feeling charged and ready to go and a little bit more stealthier, a little bit more guided, begin to make your way up the main staircase once more after a little bit of a a walk just trying to navigate. You guys are still learning the infrastructure and the kind of uh, the scope of the catacombs and just how massive and large these are. So you're kind of getting your footing down, at least from this entry point to where Miriam just was. Um, But as you're kind of wading through, you make your way to what appears to be the scent. You can smell it from a distance, the embalming hall. You make your way, you hit the left, you plug your noses as you just go up it again, that really just acidic smell. Um, And you finally hit that top door and you slowly open it again, no more than maybe 20 minutes passing. Um, As you would open the door once more, the hall is now um, a little bit clearer. There were quite a few people waltzing about in mid-conversation or in uh, midday prayers. Uh, You don't see Professor Adwell any longer walking around this hallway. Uh, but there is a very large shadow cast in the direction of where you guys are because you're on the far end of the House of Binder. It's much busier, uh, a little bit further away from you guys down the hall. Perhaps we should just walk around and try to stay hidden and see if we can spot him and then eavesdrop. Which direction was he going? He was facing the sun. Okay, I guess that's the direction we should go. All right, I'm going to sneak out. All right, so Me you too. guys begin to tuck around the right-hand corner. Um, anybody who's trying to stealth here, please roll a stealth check. Letty, if you're just kind of walking I'm in walking. full character from the <laughs> catacombs. Full grand dame, darling, full grand dame. Fantastic. Then can I please get a performance check from you? Oh, yes, you may. That'll be a 17. Oh, that was natural 20, but wait. Oh. It's a 27. It's a nat 20 for you. You said performance, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes, a nat 20 plus 7. <laughs> I am the best actress in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
because you're feeling so confident that you feel like anybody you approach right now will like fully believe you. That's how intense. But I you want are. to keep in mind, I still have my Harry Potter round glasses on, gold frames, but also this wig and and uh, you know dress and lace, and that she basically looks like someone else. But also, yes. you can see she has those very juvenile glasses on. She's a real lady. There, she you is pass, a real lady. You pass some people in the hallway, and you see one or two people whispering about your gown and your outfit like they're jealous of the of the retrofit of it yes thank you it's Givenchy (laughs) yes Um, so what did you guys get on your stealth checks a dirty 20 nice (laughs) 10 I had the bardic dance nine nine but we are waiting and letting them go before us yes the two of you um Huck and Starla you guys feel like you're pressing forward fairly quietly tucking into the shadows uh kind of dropping to the right hand side and just trying to go from like door to door, curtain to curtain, or page to page without stirring too much trouble, pretty much staying adjacent, not too far away, maybe 20 feet away from um, Letty, who's making her way gliding through the center of the hall, this glistening, gorgeous uh, hall, uh, this temple made of Oh, I thought you were talking about me glistening. (laughs) No, you definitely are. You're making as much of a presence as you wish, and you're nailing it. Um, But as you kind of make your way through the main hall, the two of you... um, take a moment and you kind of feel like you're creeping around the corner staying in the shadows you're I, you're probably giving Huck and Starla a solid 30 foot distance just to make sure that no one looks in your direction just in case you guys let's see okay so uh Drusilda and Celine so as you guys are tucking in the right hand side you think you're quiet. You think you're step, like stepping together without raising any sort of suspicion. But th- these floors are polished and waxed to perfection. The reflection of the sun on the ground just illuminates the hall in this kind of beautiful uh, shimmering gold. It's gorgeous kind of pink marble and, and really illuminated text. really my scales. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> but in all this sort of illuminated text, um, you guys catch that your your feet just squeak hard against the floors as you turn and somebody's staring at you guys like who are these kids and why are they here um it looks like a janitor of the temple who is just right now with a massive mop like using a little bit of magic to move it around but has stopped <laughs> the mop looking at you guys quizzically so Drizilda fixates on him and smiles seductively at him. Excuse me, sir, would you be able to tell us where the loo is? He (laughs) slowly uses the magic and like begins to turn the mop around as it sledges and points in like the far left-hand corner direction. Thank you. You're so handsome. All right, I want you to roll (laughs) a a performance, uh, excuse me, persuasion check to try to get him to not rouse his suspicions. Uh, 22. 22, okay. This is probably a younger janitor, right out of uh, high school. Probably like just, just trying to get some, type. just trying to get a job. <laughs> a handlebar mustache, oh, yes. uh, <laughs> blue eyes, reddish hair. Uh, just kind of wearing a trucker cap. I'm imagining what's his face <laughs> from the <laughs> equivalent of a trucker yeah. cap. <laughs> the equivalent of a trucker cap. What is that? <laughs> In this world, oh, it I is literally a ha- it's called we'll call it it's called a uh, uh, well, it's called a carriage hat. And so it's <laughs> men who drive carriages wear. Um, so he's got this carriage hat on. He uses the mop and kind of slops sh- it in the left-hand direction towards the loo. Drizilda's kind of turned on, despite her preference for rich men. Uh, <laughs> she does have a thing for gingers. <laughs> I mean, he's I'll be got back for freck- you, He's got freckles. He's got blue overalls that are wet on the bottom from him just trying to clean them up the I floor. I can feel Celine's hand on my shoulders steering me in the direction he pointed his mop to. Yeah, he doesn't know how to react to someone like acknowledging him, let alone flirting with him. So he's oh. just the, the mop is kind of like almost like it almost hits you, and he's like, "Sorry, sorry," oh. as he's trying to. Get the mob out of your way as you're your walking past. Your eyes sparkle like sapphires even here in the shadow. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so the two of you guys push each other. Uh, Celine, you kind of, yes, scoop, scoop. <laughs> but seriously, he was really cute. You can come back for him once we've figured everything out. I wonder if he and has one of those newfangled things called a tractor. I hear they're quite rumbly. <laughs> I know what those are. 
Sorry. I perhaps I don't care. Let's go. Okay. So yeah, the two of you guys push each other one by one into the bathroom, just trying to get out of this situation that had created some noise. Um, the two of you, however, are able to kind of sneak up alongside Letty. Letty, um, can I have you roll a, per- a quick perception check as you're looking around? Oh yes, darling. Perception is my third name. Um, when it has a little line under it, it's it would be a nine, correct? <laughs> it would be. Okay, and then perception plus two, that would be an eleven. Okay. Those who do math. So you're very in character, mm. um, and you're trying to find your point. Like you have a, you have a direction. You have a mission, and you must. Would you speak. say I have a scene objective? Yeah, you have a scene objective, Letty. Wonderful. <laughs> and you feel like you need to find your, your query. So as you're walking through this main hall, you're walking up to a few people that you see scattered around. And what are you saying to them as you're approaching them? Because you're just trying to find Professor Adwald right now. I walk up, and or she walks up, um, Miss Lady Bridge, uh, walks up to the first person she sees, happens to be another elder, a uh, man, and... You know, she taps him on the shoulder. Excuse me, ex- excuse me, darling. Um, what do you want? Oh, <laughs> man of my own heart. I like your dress. You, you, thank you. I've, I've bought it. Givenchy. <laughs> anyway, um, now I'm looking for a man. Um, That's me. Well, you are a man. You're just not quite the one I'm looking for. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> now, well, I love that you have a sense of humor, darling. Um, I'm looking for a man. Um, he's quite slender, I believe. Oh, uh, that's not me. Uh, um, no, it's well. At least you know. He looks in for Professor. Well, he's a thin. He's the thin one. How did you know that? Because so he's skinny. P- he is skinny, but just so perceptive. I just said skinny, and you knew. I think we have a connection. <laughs> I got a wife, but she would like your dress. Oh, good. Could she- I? Could I buy your dress off you? No. Okay. <laughs> and he kind of takes a moment. He pats you on his back. Um, you strike up a little bit of a conversation with this really old man, um, <laughs> and he mentions a chubby that he, old man, uh, <laughs> very chubby, stout old man. Definitely he not He mentions skinny. that Professor Adewal uh, is usually walking around this time of day in the main hall, um, just speaking to the heads of the temple. Mm-hmm. Um, he points in the direction of where he likely is, which is one of the like smaller prayer rooms off to the right hand side. I look around, uh, Lady Bridge looks around to see where um, the sneakers are, the sneak attack crew, I guess you could call them, uh, <laughs> um, Starlin Huckle. So yeah, actually, while that's happening, uh, the two of you guys, could I have you guys just roll a quick perception check as you can see Letty engaging in this conversation and the two of you have been trying to oh, work oh, around. That'll be a dirty 20. Oh, okay, hang on. Uh... 24. Okay, yeah. So you guys have kept your wits about you. You're learning the layout of this area. So it is based on chapters, if you guys remember, and there, it's like a folded out book. Um, you guys kind of exited from towards the end chapter because that's the catacombs. So it goes yeah. all the way through and fetters all the way through to the beginning. So the beginning is where the entrance is to Birth. the main temple. Get it? Entrance into life? I rolled high on percent. <laughs> and you guys feel like you get a real understanding. You've never been in the in House of Binder before, but you feel like you get an understanding of uh, several of the different chapters and kind of the way that they navigate. There's certain sect- sections that are based on family and love and life and knowledge, and there's just every single chapter, there's just thousands of books. So it's kind of like this split kind of looking library with a main section with the far left side that is all the way to death and the far right hand side that's all the way to life. Letty has been making her way pretty much through the whole hallway, weaving a little bit through each of the chapters, at least the initial entrance point of the long sort of libraries. Um, But as she makes her way, you can see her striking up this conversation on the far, far right hand side with this old man. You guys had made your way close enough, quietly enough that you're within earshot. Um, and you can hear that she's kind of now had had heard that uh, Adwalt's often in a room that's right at the entrance, right next to the entrance, one of the prayer rooms right by there. So you guys also overheard what Letty overheard. Huck starts making all these weird, like, hand movements that 
he thinks are like code for all of these things he wants to say. Would you but say they really kind of like, look like a um, air airline? Yeah, you know, very back much. In the day it would be a dragon yeah, line. Yeah, half that, mm. half sign language, but it's not actually signs for anything. He's just trying to convey, hey, let that's I heard that. Let's go over there. And I see you guys doing this and know that they're that you're heading in the right direction. Um, and I'm just going to trail gracefully. She's going to trail behind you. Styla sees. Just in case she's needed. Styla sees all the hand signals, and I'd like to think she knows Huck pretty well. And it's just like, mm hmm. <laughs> and is nodding at him. She's like, yeah, I heard it too. <laughs> oh, we can. Oh, yeah, we can talk a little bit. Okay, let's go yeah, over there. We can talk real quiet. Okay, yeah, I, I, can, yeah. I can be real quiet. Psst, We're really close to each other. Darlings, just, just, I'm, I, I kind of gracefully smile. I, you, know, you know, she does one of those, <laughs> nothing's wrong here, <laughs> and just kind of rushes over to these younger children because she looks a little bit older. Um, don't come over here. Listen, go away. Oh, Tell don't think. Don't, 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 I have invisibility if you need it. No, we're okay, good. But we're good right now. But you think I'm just saying you're bringing attention to us. Yeah, you ran behind one of the nearby curtains and like kind of like we're like talking over your shoulder at it. And like people were <laughs> looking at you like you were crazy. But your performance check was so high. I think that many of them think that this is just like a part of who she the strange woman from another era or world. <laughs> wow, what an eccentric rich woman. Yeah. It's part of a library oh. performance series that, uh, you know, excuse me, everyone, uh, this is part of a, don't worry, this is part of a library performance series I like to call Ladies, Children, Curtains. The one old guy that you spent time talking to is so excited, starts applauding in the As back. As she's bringing the attention to herself, I'm going to sneak mm-hmm. away from her. Yeah, yeah same. You guys, you guys feel like you're in the shadows and tucked in enough that you're able to slide away with as Letty is putting on this like uh, very short-lived performance. She's Lady Bridge is signing autographs now. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Drusilda and Celine, the two of you guys are currently in the bathroom. What are you? Uh, can we just cut to there and see what's happening? <laughs> Well, uh, we kind of lost them. Yes, we did. I actually did have to tinkle, though. So, now I'm relieved. Well, that's good. <laughs> you take a moment and you open up the stall and you have to take a moment and jump back because, like, knocked out, like, semi-unconscious, like, sitting on top of the stall, <laughs> passed out, is a friend that you guys have been looking for, <gasps> um, Fruit. Drizilda grabs Celine's hand. You'll never believe who's in this store. Who? Farut. Farut? Looks very beaten up, unconscious, oh, very my tired. Oh god, what happened to his claws? I loved his talents. He had such glistening talents. He looks like he's been through a bit. Farut? Wait, is there anyone here? And Drizilda leans over and looks under the stalls to see if there's any other feet. Are there any other feet in this bathroom? You don't see any other feet. Okay. You, you guys, you guys, when you walked in, feels like there was an echo. You feel like you're okay here. At least I the lock the door. Okay, sounds good. You go up to the door. There's a lock. You mm-hmm. turn that thing. All right. I'm going to splash some water on his face. Farut. Farut. Oh, little birdie. Fruit. Fruit. He hates when I call him fruit. You guys, you guys want to make a medicine check real quick, the two of you? Yeah. Solid ten. <laughs> Eleven. You guys have no idea if Fruit's dead or alive. You don't know if Fruit's playing a game right now. You have no idea. But Fruit definitely looks like they just got out of some sort of situation. You can tell that uh, some of uh, his feathers are matted. Um, uh, the wrists look like they had been restrained, and you can see that there's an impression. Um, I'm gonna. Looks like it looks like somehow he must have escaped something and has passed out in the safest location possible in the bathroom stall of a house of God. I am going to cast cure wounds. Okay, on him. Yes, you take a moment. Your hand touches uh, Fruit's shoulder, and Fruit, you suddenly feel like a moment of fresh air uh, kind of kick into your lungs now that you're not. <gasps> Shh. Oh, oh Farut. Are you okay? Oh. Please don't hurt me. No, no. Farut, it's us. It's me. It's Drisilda and Celine. Farut. And oh. Drisilda, like, puts her hand underneath his beak. 
Oh, God. Oh. What happened to you? Oh, piss it. Oh, I'm in a lot of pain. I don't really know what happened. Um. What's the last thing you remember? Oh, well, being beaten gruesomely. Who By beat whom? you? Inhumanely. I don't know. I don't know. They they put a bun, a, 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 a turban or something around my eyes, and I I couldn't see. Um, like you were a common hawk. Worse, a pigeon. <gasps> <laughs> and darling you poor thing I, 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 how long has it been since I left you it's only been since yesterday very early in the morning I believe. Oh. Oh. maybe about two days ago because you guys just slept the night prior so no more than 48 hours Drisilda looks in her backpack to see if she has any sort of food to offer him. Terribly exhausted. I have... Ugh, honestly, it doesn't look very appetizing now, but I have some leftover turkey jerky with honey. A Do not give him a bird. bird. Uh, I'm afraid that's all I have. <laughs> Do you eat it, fruit? <laughs> This bird no, 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 the no. record I've served a bird bird fair. There I mean are, a bird. There are Can't birds move. that eat other birds. Hawks. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, Hawks. Mm-hmm. Truth. Mm-hmm. You're a raven. Thank you, Erica. So just how I mean much I of a cannibal have are you? eaten a bird before, but it's not well, if you're not desperate, there is time. I am desperate. I'm hungry. I'm exhausted. I'm beat. The scent alone, it sound it smells so good. It's like this deliciously petrified honey ham. Well, so must. you just take a moment and push out the thought of it being a bird and you gorge on it. You just swallow it in one big swoop. Tastes like banana. Just go. Uh. And I take it in my mouth and Farouk munches and, or my beak, my beak, and I <laughs> munch and oh, it's actually pretty good. Um, doesn't taste anything like banana, but it's actually really, uh, it's okay. Farouk, Thank you. can I have you roll a history check to try to recall some things from the last couple of days now that you actually have nutrients in you and you're not exhausted? Do I add any? Yes, history check if you happen to have any modifications on that. It'll be... Still learning how to use this app. <laughs> Everyone Get your own D and D Beyond. Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> you can't buy that. Yes, yeah, so you're taking a moment trying to recall any of the details you can from the last couple days. You just remember that there was a shadow that like overwhelmed you. It was the middle of the night, right as you were leaving and trying to get home safely. Um, you were captured. You were somewhere that was noisy, then somewhere that suddenly wasn't. Um, there were several people who were trying to make sure that you're in between the stasis, stasis of conscious and unconscious. And you do feel like you overheard an important conversation, but right now you're not in enough of a mental or physical kind of uh, strength and fortitude to, to recall that. So you feel like you need a couple, maybe a day of rest before you can try to remember anything that has happened. I do feel that I need some time to rest and heal a bit from that journey. Well, darling, I'm afraid that's quite impossible right now. Question, sorry. What what are her hit points now, if we need to know? Um, it's whatever you happen to heal her up. So however many oh, hit points Oh, so she was at was. zero. Okay, because mm-hmm. we never rolled that. I was yeah. at zero. You were, you were at one. You at had one. just escaped, and you were, you were essentially taking a nap to try to get healthier. You have seven hit points. So you're feeling a little bit better, but you do feel like you need to recover more fully very soon. All right. So as you're taking care of her in the bathroom, let's cut back to you guys walking through the main hall. 
Um, you guys kind of sneak as much as you can to the right as Letty is finishing up her performance. <laughs> um, you guys hit the door that was pointed to, um, and it's currently closed. Um, do you guys want to attempt to open it? Is it like a, a turn handle, or is it like a push door? Just roll an investigation check as you're trying to understand this door. Oh boy. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's not bad. Investigation? Mm-hmm. Oh no. Okay. Um... Listen, I'm not real smart, you guys. I'm real not. I'm not. It's a 10. A 10? Okay. Huckleberry, do you need me to take a look? Yes, please. Um, <laughs> like looking at the door. Starla. At least I didn't roll a one and just shove it right open. Oh, don't say that. No, I'm not I'm a dummy. I'm a halfling. One. I can't roll a one. All right. It is not within my power. Well, you know what? <laughs> oh, no. What'd you do? Apparently, I'm not that smart either. Oh, no. What'd you do? Seven. <laughs> oh, my God. You're worse than me. So the two of you guys are just looking at this door quizzically, <laughs> trying to understand it. It looks completely fine like huh. it's a door, but you can definitely tell that it's closed. <laughs> These two idiots staring at it like, how do we open this door? The stealthy idiots. Oh, no. So what oh, do you guys no. want to do? do you we clad as hell, it? but we oh. dumb as shit. <laughs> That's our catchphrase. <laughs> we quiet as hell, but we dumb as shit. <laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna try and just push it. All right, just I need you to roll a uh, I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw. Saving throw, super duper. <laughs> Do we both need to? You know to? what? I, Remember, I think help. just tuck tuck. I forgot. Oh, okay. We had this. I could have added that to the ten. I'm a dummy. Oh, the bardic dummy. inspiration. Yeah. And I you got my guidance. So we redo. Throw? I forgot to use my guidance. Can you redo? No. no. Nope. Ah, crud. You can add Dirty up. 20. Okay, so you're only going to take half damage. Oh, super. <laughs> um, but as, like, you feel, like, this electric shock, like, <gasps> run through you, take one point of lightning damage okay. as your hand had hit the handle, and there's some sort of enchantment on the door. Only one point. As you feel electric shock go through you, I need you to roll a stealth check to try to retain your quiet as you're getting shocked by a door. Oh, 12. 12? Okay, you, you're you kind of, it's like one of those moments where you see the uh, you see the whole skeleton like go oh through your body. Oh, it's a Looney Tunes uh, moment. Like a Looney Tunes <laughs> moment. But then it stops and you take a moment, you guys look around. Uh, Letty, what do you do when you hear like Huck's whimpering howl? Howl! <laughs> Uh, um, uh, Lady, yeah. Letty, now, uh, you know, d- uh, you know, in her Lady Bridge um, mental state, it, as is looking around while she's, you know, greeting her fans and signing things and thinking that she's famous when she is just not. Um, no. Here's this kind of jerks around while fake smiling. <laughs> hello, oh, thank you, thank you. I, oh, oh, I must go. Sorry, <laughs> I have other fans to attend to. Thank you. They must be here next time for Lady Curtain. Jeanette, whatever the name was of that, and then I <laughs> and walk then you away. hear well, you hear this like, like this ooh yeah. in the corner, and everyone looks in that direction. What do you do? Oh, I, I, I uh, she looks at at everyone and um, says, "Don't worry, that is the next performance. Gearing up, uh, we have some great clown work coming in from France. France, uh, fr- sorry, it's drug France." Um, it's you know a dragon French show and um, they're coming in in a few minutes so everyone just enjoy your studies and uh, we will be back <laughs> roll Thank a you. deception check with advantage okay. <laughs> she claps first yes. and you um, have your own bardic inspiration okay wait uh, what did I, oh I have my own bardic inspiration do I get it myself Yes, so what does it mean? I no, get no, no, no. I gave you just general inspiration, which means uh, if one of your dice rolls are not good, you can try to reuse one of them. Well, I have uh, one. Is This one is 16 plus, what would you say? What am I doing? Persuasion? Deception. Uh, four. So 20. Dirty 20. Yes. You <laughs> You really, This you which have the crowd that? eating out of your hands. Yes. Um, this old man that you had spoken to earlier walks up and he goes, may the blessings of Ogma's knowledge be up. On you, and he hands you a uh, five gold piece as a, oh, as a token of your I performance. I have five extra pieces. I'd never wait. Hold on, that's not a voice. That was just Kellen doing <laughs> something happy. Um, she's very excited. She's blushing because a letty's starting to come out. Because when she gets shy, it does. So unfortunately, uh, Lady Bridge sounds like, "Oh, I cannot believe this. I'm so happy for you. It's really good. Thank you. I must go because I'm oh." 
and uh, <laughs> she runs or yeah, glides <laughs> and, and away, and everyone is kind of oh, talking about her, I, I would assume. <laughs> and then she runs uh, gliding, kind of walking fast, uh, presenting her arms like, you know, a, a courtier, a, you know, what is this called? A lady of the court. Yes. And um, goes over to... You know, sneak it. Yes, sneak. you kind of pull yourself into Curve. one of the nearby shadows and the nearby uh, draped curtains, and you kind of like pull the curtain as if there's like a performance about to happen, and you turn around and you can see hiding in the shadow two eyes that are blinking back at you, uh, which you feel like were uh, likely Huck's eyes with a stealth check of 12. You can't see Starla, where Starla's hiding, but oh, you can gosh. definitely tell that Huck's blinking back at you. Darling, um, I got it. <clears throat> I, I'm all right. I, I cannot. I can't hold it any longer. Um, excuse me. Um, Huckle, could you please tell me what is going on? Because I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I touched a door and I got shook. You got shook or shocked? Shock and shook. Both. Great. Um, that sounds very scary. But it was we, not we, we have to get behind that door because that's what pro- professor, the I, professor I, 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 I is. I'm trying, but there's a whole weird duty add on it. From can... a, from the shadow, you hear Styla. Just all we could. No, dang it! I'm British. Hold on. <laughs> it's okay. I was darling. doing it's her very, accent earlier. It's very crazy. I looked Star right at Island. Kelly when I did it too, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm doing the Bronx accent." Oh, oh that's what you were doing. Line. I saw you looking at me, and I didn't know. <laughs> all right, I'm back. Okay, I'm back. Starla. Okay. Or we could just wait here till the professor comes out. Or I could go in. If I. If no, you, you might get door, shocked. You're gonna get shocked. Unless you have, like, a dispel magic, but I don't think any of us can. I don't think I do. Yeah. So as the three of you guys are trying to figure out a game plan, uh, we do a slow, like, upward sky pull (laughs) as we go back down to the far end of the book here uh, in this beautiful, beautiful temple to our friends in the loo. Not far away. We should perhaps take Farut to our our room in the catacomb and let him rest, perhaps. Yes, the other idea is we could talk to Miram, see if she has any sort of healing abilities. I I could do some more healing as well. Let's take him back to the room. Okay, so you guys slowly open the bathroom door. Um, (laughs) As you guys walk out of it, you can see that the janitor was like, like kind of sheepishly looking in your direction from the exit. Um, he's definitely got eyes on you guys. Are you trying to keep fruit quiet here, or? What the I'm man? walking with one wing over each girl. Okay. Because I'm a pimp like that. <laughs> <laughs> you helped us find my sister's boyfriend. Thank you so much. He like walks up, like kind of stirring. I'm like, single, you know. He he he, w- he was in the, in the bathroom. That's not good. Why is there a man in the bathroom? Darling, ba- he was I'm, so confused. You had a really rough that's, night. That's but you know what? I love rough nights. So what, <gasps> what's happening? Saucy. It I'm is okay. Pimp. Everything is okay. My sister thinks you are very cute. This is my boyfriend. He had a little too much ale last night and he got sick in the bathroom. And I apologize. It is clean. We cleaned it up just for you because we knew. Which one of the two of you wants to make a deception check? One of you guys get to choose. I will. Okay. Celine, go for it. Celine. <laughs> Good thing I am lucky. <laughs> You're gonna use Ooh. it. Nice. Okay. Was it a net one? It sure Ooh. was. <laughs> it was a net one. You go away. <laughs> no die. Oh. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Oh my god. It is a two. <laughs> oh my god. Plus, plus four, so six. So as you're saying this, there's a moment that this, like, janitor kid, like, is kind of swayed, but then, like, looks at the state Fruit's in, and is panics. It goes, oh, God, he... He looks like he's been beat up. Is oh oh geez, oh, oh golly gee. Oh, it, just boss, boss. Calm he, just, down, he starts to run child. down the hall shouting. All right, boss, we better boss, hurry. Boss. We run. We we <laughs> run you guys toward the entrance to the catacomb. Okay, okay. Just make just make quick athletics checks to try to get like as quickly as you possibly can into that door and down the hall. Oh, natural one. <gasps> 
Seventeen? Seventeen, okay. And then Fruit. Twenty-three. Okay, Fruit, you're kind of able to kind of keep in the shadows, not too far away. Drusilda, like, you go, but you forgot there's a patch of that wet ground that the janitor was just cleaning up. And so you slip, like, like a on a banana peel and then oh. smack your back down real hard. There's an echo. And all those people who are applauding look and turn to your direction. And all of them go, the clown show! And oh. they just all start, <laughs> you yes. a group of, like, 20 people all I making I completely <laughs> missed that because I was reading about a spell and all I heard was the clown <laughs> show <laughs> and there's like 20 people walking in your direction do I see Letty um not too far away like peek her head out from a curtain after hearing the clown show Giselda looks at Letty like what the fuck do I do and Celine just starts laughing <laughs> It and is I, the clown show. And I morph, in, uh, so Drusilda <laughs> morphs into her radiance form, but oh. tinges it with like this hideous, dark, insane clown posse, grotesque, oh, lime Jesus. green nastiness. Okay. <laughs> and with these goddamn high heels, she starts tap dancing in this <laughs> grotesque little like disjointed clown way and goes and like runs up to little kids going <laughs> and throwing up her hands like a clown. Great. Roll a performance check with oh advantage because that's great. <laughs> Insane clown. With advantage. Giselda. Okay. Um, 12. No, 13. All right. The audience is captivated. There oh, are there are pup, there is one child that openly starts crying really loudly, oh. like like crying, and the mom's like trying to calm her down. And you can still hear in the distance that I hiss janitor. At her. <laughs> yeah, that, that kid wets them. While she is doing <laughs> this, while she is doing this, um, we try to sneak. Yes, this is a good diversion. You guys definitely are able to get into the catacombs and down the main hall. Um, the three of you guys are all trapped behind, not about 120 feet away, like down the main hall, like just watching this all go down. Oh, God. Um, uh, uh, um, you guys, I, 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 that was a very weird performance. I did that. I would have never condoned that. <laughs> this little kid just started crying. Drusilda uh, Crab kind of walks over towards okay. Letty, like this creepy dark angel clown posse. <laughs> crab. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> wait, All wait, of the you, audience is following you, too. Where'd though. you go? Um, okay. Wait. So, just so you know, the whole audience oh, is following you. Oh, no. There's 20 people walking right oh, no. behind you, captivated by and your I'm going to try to keep the crowd coming towards no. me and away from Celine and Fabute okay. escaping. Yeah. But I you want them away from, I, 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 you know, Letty Bridget wants them away from us because she's just realized she has mage hand and can open the door. <laughs> so there's like a moment of like your panic setting in your eyes um, and panic setting in Celine's eyes. As I, you just, I'm assuming, can drag them maybe to the center of the room and start to like do this horrific spidery oh. dance around them all. It's so <laughs> horrific. And and, she, and uh, Letty just keeps going. I'm not, I'm not Lady Bridge right now. I'm not. I cannot perform. I'm not Lady Bridge. Um, 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 Look at her mm, performance and, and get. I, okay, I, get I, 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 I <clears throat> shush her and I start talking to the crowd. And now this is a participatory dance. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and I grab the scared being. Oh my kid, god! And I swing them around here? in a circle. Can I have you? <laughs> because everyone's eyes are definitely going to be on. Can I have the you middle? make? Can I have you make an intimidation check? Just, has she oh, moved? Geez. Has she moved away oh towards, as Drusilda moved more towards the center yeah, of the room and away from me as yeah, well? Yeah, like, Poor child. This child. I know, but I'm saving us. I'm saving Farouk. I'm saving. Yes. Uh, okay, Drusilda's, sorry, you said what? Drusilda's kind of like about 30 feet away from you guys. Okay. I don't think Drusilda's trying to showcase that the three of you are hiding okay. behind the curtain. Okay. Yeah. So, what did you roll for your intimidation check? 13? Yeah, this little kid is like scared shitless. Everyone else is enjoying the performance. Like <laughs> what all the this other kids' parents doing. Um, the mother's trying to grab her daughter like out of your hands as you're swinging her around <laughs> in this twisted dance. Like, like it's it's like a carnival ride where the child is like trying to avoid crying, but you just keep swinging up and down in the different directions. Uh, so yes. Yeah. So um. Uh, Letty has um, been inspired by this and knows she has to go back into Lady Bridge 
if she can. So she starts flinging her pearls around because sometimes the sound of the pearls <laughs> just can get her going. Um, <laughs> Hello. Um, okay, darlings. I'm back. Thank you. It was very helpful. But it's the clown show. No, you're not over by me. You're in the middle of the performance <laughs> we're, field. We're the and we're over in the curtains. And I, ladies, I just have to tell you that I have mage hand. I'm not a lady. Oh, I... I knew that. I just, you know, when I, in the theater, sometimes we call everyone lady because oh, that a you never thing? know in the theater. I you don't just know. never I, know. I, I've never been to the theater. Well, huck, huckle, of I. Huckleberry yeah. um, and Starla, I have made hand. Do you think I can use that to open the door you so that try. I can go inside and try to speak to Adelwald and find out while the others try to save Farouk? Oh, you could try. Okay. Wait, Farouk's here? Yes, we just saw him with, you know, when they, they snuck him out. We saw, We're behind the, the curtain. Show. I didn't see anything. Yeah, uh, I don't think you guys would know that because Farouk rolled pretty high on their stealth check and your passive perception. But even if not. I was, my perception was very high. Your, yeah, I know. your passive perception isn't high enough. Uh, it was you're actively looking for someone who's got it. So you, you wouldn't we have caught Farouk in the shadows unless you were actively looking for them. Well, then I just know that this, this Drizzle is acting like a freaking nightmare. <laughs> yeah, definitely the case. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh must meet, must be for something. Um, okay, so I can, I'm, I, uh, I'm, I, I'm, you, I'm going to cast Mage Hand, okay. and I'm going to. Hand I have my hand. <laughs> that See, was some effect was... That, I, that Letty actually made for herself because <laughs> she just thought it was so cool if there was a added sound. Well, <laughs> I'm going to point to the hand. Or Stylus putting in the hand and she whispers to Huck, That's why I was sneaking into the school. I want to learn to do cool stuff like that. Oh, yeah, I want to learn to do cool stuff like that, too. I can do kind of some things, but not a whole lot. I can't do anything. I can sneak real well. You're so bad. You were very good at sneaking. I was proud of you both. No, thanks. Thank you. Letty was scared shitless. (laughs) Good at sneaking, but we're Okay, so I'm going to use his hand. Smart. We have to get to something, right? Okay. So you take a moment, the hand touches the handle. Nothing seems to go off as the hand slowly turns the door. Is, are you trying to keep it real quiet? No, because I'm, I had I rolled very well on persu- uh, persuasion and performance. Okay, so you're feeling confident. Very confident. All right. So the door, you hear the hand and the door like just flies open, opens flies completely. Open. Um, you hear stirring inside, <laughs> somebody being like, what? And some other voice being like, I don't know how. And you can hear the two of them talking. And someone walks forward, this like man who must be maybe in his 30s, maybe 35, just some sort of priest or some sort of clergyman of this temple. And he just looks around and he grabs the door and he slams it shut. Well, that's unfortunate because Letty is currently a 16 year old dressed up as a <laughs> elder. <laughs> Fancy. Dog well, he theater. like he. Are you and you're standing right in front? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he like looks looks you up and down and like confused and just grabs the door and slams it shut. Well, um, let it, it, Huckle uh, Starla, that doesn't seem to have worked. Wait. So. Oh, I have an idea. You can make people invisible, right? I can. Yes, I can. You can make the door open again, and and one of us can can roll inside. Oh yeah, that could work. Invisible before he gets the chance to shut it. Okay. Um, um, I still have the hand out. Um, yeah. um, as she does, and she... and when you when also when you looked inside the the actual mm. space, it seemed like some sort of prayer room. Ooh. Um, there was a table in the center, a few chairs. You definitely saw Professor Adwell in there talking uh, to whoever this man was that came forward and closed the door in your face. Oh, then Letty really wants to make them invisible. So who, ladies, who is who is going to take the invisibility? Can I make two people invisible? Not yet. Just one. Mm-hmm. So. Which one's going? I can go. All right, Starla. And then, um, is there a special, uh, <laughs> is there a special way to do this? It's my first time, <laughs> no, as Lady Bridge doing it, so I, I just, you know, I just... This is your first you. time making anyone invisible? No, no, Letty's done it many times, and I think Mil Bronson, I think Zizzo, and I think Hasselbachen, but I, I've not made anyone, because I don't like to temper in the, you know in the magic so I just perform are so, there any like weird weird side effects that could happen if it's your first time let's find out how long is she gonna be invisible so, she gonna be invisible forever I think she's invisible till the spell ends well how long is that is that forever 
Um, as long as it's on the target person, up to an hour with concentration. So I will be concentrating. Do I have to, does um, she have to drop Mage Hand to do this? Or no. can she have both? No. Perfect. You so I can open the door as well. You would know that they come from well. different spellcasting sectors. You'd I be love like, the sectors. Oh, because one's a cantrip. All right. One's a conjuration. Great, I love the conjure. So um, <laughs> she she looks at Starla and she does, you know, waves her hands around her in a very dramatic fashion from head to toe and says, whoop But then you have to actually touch her. So And so touches we- her on the toe. <laughs> she goes, whoop And then touches her only on one toe and then opens the door with the mage hand. Good luck, darling. Okay, so the door's flung open. You want to stealth in there real quick? Yeah. All right, roll stealth check. Oh, that's a natural oh 20. My <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Oh my god. You slip in there. That same priest, that 35 year old priest or so, walks up to the door again and, like, and you're still standing there. And he goes, Excuse me. Stop. Oh, this is not the powder room. No, it's a private conversation. You shouldn't even been able to open the door. I'm sorry. He, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. He just, he just rolls his eyes and he slams the door but shut. But if you do get to come to the show, and it's... You hear a lock. You hear a lock. <laughs> the show tomorrow. You hear some sort of lock on the door. Well, All right. I can take a hint. No. And then we ha- I, she goes and hides um, with Huckle behind the curtain to get back there. Brings her hand along with her, you know, that's just floating around. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> kind of lasso, invisible lassos that just up. Just trailing behind. And uh, <laughs> Starla is in the room. All right, so you sneak inside, and what you see is this. It's about a 30 by 20 foot room. It's a square. Um, there's old dusty tomes on, like, uh, old forgotten library books of some sort of age all around the rim of this room. Um, there's, like, a cedar kind of table in the center and a couple of plush chairs around it. There's stacks of books uh, that look like maybe they have been there from previous meetings long ago. Um, but what you see is this. Sitting there, um, this priest walking towards the table, and sitting at the actual table is what seems to be Professor Adamwall. Um, sitting there very properly, uh, two hands folded in front of him, um, looking kind of nose upturned at the door uh, in curiosity, but the moment that it shut, uh, kind of blinks twice and then stares back at the priest. <clears throat> this priest takes a moment and sits down next to him, crosses his legs and leans forward. And you hear the priest say this. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I... D- I don't know what that's about. This place is usually people of prayer come here and it's safe and those doors are all charged to make sure that anybody who wishes to speak freely knows that they have a safe place to do it. And Professor Adewal kind of like gives a very curt nod in the direction of this priest and he goes, yes, I, uh, I guess I, was just, it makes me nervous thinking that somebody could just walk in this way. I mean, I came here as a means to work through some of my transgressions. Um, and you can see that the priest kind of leans forward and goes, yes, we have all done things that do not allow the, um, the strength of Agma to resonate within us. There are times when when we choose ignorance over knowledge. And <clears throat> Professor Adewal slowly nods. Um, as you're kind of creeping around the corner, you take a moment, <clears throat> you tuck into the far corner nearby one of the bookshelves, the bookcases, and kind of sit behind one of the trolleys that a bunch of books are on so you can kind of see through the slits and just make sure you're quiet and not disturbing any of the conversation that you're overhearing. And Starla's not moving at all because she does not want to risk touching a book, knocking it over. Yes, and you can tell these things are old and dusty and definitely would kick up a lot of dirt, so you're just mm-hmm. sitting there, like, stone cold, um, and you overhear this conversation. Um, Professor Adewald kind of nods once more and goes, I come here often, right? And the priest goes, well, yes, yes. And Professor Adewald nods and goes, then I just need to know why was I here again last week? And the priest takes a moment and just says, well, I mean, there was there's reasons that you've attended in the past. It's been some time, and you just see the head slowly nod of Professor Edwall, and you can hear, I really need to know. And the priest kind of 
There's no chill. It kind of sits up curiously and goes, Well, I mean, obviously there's a... You should remember. You you came because you were upset about something that you felt like you did, but you couldn't remember it. And then um, this professor kind of takes a moment and looks around quickly. And nods slowly at the priest. And you can tell from just where you're watching that the, the professor is really looking this priest up and down. Um, can I have you roll a quick perception check? Please be good, please be good, please be good. Nope, it's really bad, it's a one. Okay. Unfortunate, unfortunate, unfortunate. Oh, but I'm lucky. I was gonna <gasps> say, are you a halfling? Okay, that's a 11. Okay, so it's not like you're not seeing anything here, but you, you can catch that there's a moment, there's a cut in the air of like uncomfortability and you can't you can't see where the professor's looking, but there's there's some place that they're looking with intent and with um, with almost like like they're deliberating something. Uh, the moment passes and the professor stands abruptly and goes, well, then I think that if you're not willing to give me more information, then I don't have a reason to be here right now. And then the priest goes, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I, this is my job. And you can hear the two of them sort of arguing back and forth. The professor being very adamant about trying to figure out why they were here the week prior. Give me more information. Why did I come a month ago? Give me more information. And this priest just getting like confused about why the professor is getting so animated about his memory loss and or what they, pri- what they spoke about prior to. With that, you see Professor Edwal smile, and you see a hand smack across the priest's face. Next time on the broadcast. Yeah, I am just a scared little girl. He knows about us. He knows about our friends. He knew who I was. I guess we follow it. I'm going to go down into the catacomb. Should we get out of here? Hey, I'm Kimberly Daugherty, and I play Celine Tessar. Hi, I'm Kellen Coleman, and I play Letty Marie Ricecroft. Hi, my name is Alice Gretchen, and I play Drisilda Slendron. Hi, I'm Erica Fermina, and I'm playing Starla Hahill. Hi, my name's Rachel Seeley, and I am playing Huck Lokley. I'm Kelly Lynn D'Angelo, your dungeon master and woman of many faces, creatures, and things unknown. I'm Richard Quiner, and I produce this podcast in partnership with Wizards of the Coast.